Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the sunny Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be, you were in a competition, not a relationship. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So jumping right in, the relationship that you were thinking of, or you're thinking of right now, or perhaps you're trying to remove yourself from, it was nothing more than a competition. It was with a toxic, narcissistic individual and this person, they wanted to take everything from you. As I mentioned so frequently on the videos, they want to take your resources, time, money, effort, energy, love, empathy, your bank account, your status, your social circle. They were trying to take everything they possibly could from you. And many times they try to play the long drawn out game, specifically if you married the narcissist, because the narcissist looked at you as an opportunity who perhaps could create children with, you could create children with, or raise children, or put a roof over their head, etc. But they, there was an end game to your relationship with the narcissist. Let's, let's focus on one part of it. Let's say that you're financially stable, or let's say that you have a great profession. Well, the narcissist looked at you, and they said to themselves, wow, this one, which was you, and certainly was me, they have resources, and they have money, and they're intelligent, and they're going places. I can glom onto them for a period of time, and I will have them provide for me. I'll have them provide vacations all over the globe, put a roof over my head, have them put money into a business that I've started, have them introduce me to their social circle, their network of friends and their status, and I will attend functions with them and I will make them look, I'll have them make me look better because now I'm tied to a person. Let's say you got married to the narcissist. Well, they knew exactly who they were marrying. It, side note, pro tip here, if you married the narcissist, they knew exactly what they were going to do with you. They knew what they could do with you and they knew how long it would take before either A, they got your replacement and you figured that out, meaning they could have or may have been having sources of supply throughout the whole length of that relationship. You just never figured it out because you're a loving, trusting person. Or B, your resources became depleted, i.e. let's say you lost your job or your health was taking a hit or the kids were now of legal age. Well, then there was no more need for you, was there? There wasn't. That's when the narcissist usually crumbles up people like a sheet of paper and throw the, throw the, the, throws them away uh, on the freeway. And why they do that is that's called the discard because you have now served your purpose for the narcissist. You've provided a lifestyle for them. You've put them high up on the pedestal. You tolerated their poor behavior and you kept doing this day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. And again, when the narcissist had extracted virtually everything from you or as much as they could take, that's when they usually discard people. Now, if you flip that coin for a moment, maybe you ended it. Maybe you're the person who is filing for divorce. Maybe you're the person who has already divorced the narcissist. Maybe you're the person who's still married to the narcissist and you realize you just have to wait till children get of legal age and then you're gone, you're out the door. Well, these are all good things. The point is, if you've identified that your partner, in this case a romantic interest, is a toxic narcissistic individual, you need to have an exit plan and you need to understand that one day in that relationship, once you've identified who they are, is one day too long. If you can go no contact, block them, delete them, remove all flying monkeys and people associated with them, do it now if you can. If not now, when? If you can't, I understand it. That means you probably still have assets or children to raise or maybe you're in business with the narcissist or you need the roof over your head or whatever it is. All of our circumstances are similar yet unique. So you need to do what's best for you. But I really strongly suggest have an exit plan. And if you can't have an exit plan quite yet, utilize gray rock, become dull and boring, do the best you possibly can to insulate and protect yourself from the toxicity of the narcissist, which includes verbal abuse, emotional abuse, mental abuse, financial abuse, there's spiritual abuse, there's your health concerns, everything. So here is really a pivotal part of the video. It's a side note again to let you know, if you're in the relationship with the narcissist, let's say you're living in, under the same roof as them, and let's say that they're retired, or let's say that they're not working, or they're working from home. In other words, they are in the house 24 seven virtually. And you have to be in that house also because let's say you're retired or you're working from home or you're a stay at home parent, whatever you are. This is where, where the narcissist wants you. They want you trapped in, and isolated in your own house. They want you feeling the pressure of the weight of the relationship. So what I'm suggesting, I suggest this during one-on-one -on -one sessions frequently, get out of your house. If you can move your body, go for a walk, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, get out, carve new neural pathways, communicate with yourself, get some fresh air, recharge your battery. And if you can get out longer than that, do it. Notice one thing, when I create my videos, almost every single time I'm outside in nature. 
I was in the jungle in Costa Rica. I was many, many other places down there. Here I'm in the woods, I've been at the beach, I've been in mountains, I've been all over. But outdoors is the path. If you can recharge your battery and get out even for a couple minutes a day, it will do wonders for you. Getting back on track, as the thumbnail mentions, you were in a competition, not a relationship. When you entered that relationship with the, the person who turned out to be a narcissist, you thought you were both headed in the same direction. You thought you were gonna grow old together or raise kids together or be on the same page and nothing could have been further from the truth. As soon as they got that wedding ring on their finger or as soon as they went into business with you or you relocated or you loaned them money or you put a roof over their head or you let them move in with you, that's when things usually turned and they turn on a dime because the narcissist can only keep the weight of the mask on super glued to their face for a certain period of time. It gets cumbersome, it gets tiring. Your relationship with them gets jaded and bored. The narcissist needs new shiny objects. They need new people to take advantage of. They need new people to pump up their fragile ego. And remember, that was you at one point. But even you, the person watching the video, you can only tolerate so much before you need to understand that this relationship wasn't serving you. And you can only pump up a fragile ego of the childlike mentality of a narcissist for so long. Number one, until you figure out who they are. But number two, until you realize, wait a minute, I keep on giving and giving and giving. And this person, what do they keep doing? They keep on taking and taking and taking. And when I wanna communicate with them or have an adult conversation and talk about what's happening or how we can get closer or move forward, they want nothing to do with it. They will tell you things like, hang on a minute, just give me a minute, I have to boil an egg or give me a second, I have to turn in an exam from 10 years ago, or I have to go upstairs and clean the attic, or hang on a minute, um, I'm busy right now, maybe we could talk about this later on. And they never want to address the hard felt issues. Notice when the chips are down, when things are really difficult, the narcissist can't handle that. This is when they freeze, this is when they get flustered. They can't handle pressure. What they need to do is they need to administer pressure, administer manipulation administer confusion and chaos. And that's what keeps the wheels of the narcissistic relationship going around and around. They cannot introspect. They will not be accountable. They will not say they are sorry. They will not admit that they were in a competition with you. But what does the narcissist love more than money? They love competing. They love winning is what they love. Think about it. Think about the toxic narcissistic person you're thinking about right now. Winning is one of the pivotal things that they need to make them feel alive. They need to feel like they're winning in the relationship with you with other people, that they're acquiring more and more broken hearts and breaking up more relationships and driving wedges between people. And they feel like they need to get as much money as they possibly can because the narcissist loves money more than anything, but they love your money more than their money or other people's money. All these things I'm mentioning to you, it, they don't culminate into a relationship. What is a relationship? A relationship is a reciprocal communication between two people. It's like this, two people communicating like a tennis match going back and forth and back and forth. In other words, I will talk to you. I will listen and wait for you to respond. I'll listen and hear about the words that you said, and then I'll give you my feedback or my takes, and we don't have to agree all the time. What we need to do is learn and evolve and grow and become closer. That is healthy communication. The narcissist doesn't want that because the narcissist believes that they are superior to you. They're more intelligent than you. They're better looking than you. They should have the things you have. Many times the narcissist believes that if they can take you down in that low vibrational quagmire state and keep you trapped in the narcissistic fog, which is what they do for the body of the relationship, that they're feeling better than you and that they're winning and that they won the competition because they don't believe you will ever A, figure out that they are a narcissist, B, that you will escape the toxic narcissistic fog, C, that you will break the trauma bond, D, that you will put yourself back together, E, that you will understand your value and your worth, and F, that you will heal properly and reach the pinnacle of indifference, the mountaintop of indifference, when you no longer care about the narcissist or any people from that period of time. Because most of those people, if not all of them, have weeded themselves out. No one came knocking on your door when you were discarded. No one checked in on you. No one asked for your side of the story. Everybody just disappeared like a cockroach in the kitchen at midnight when you turn the light switch on. And many of those people grab their popcorn and watch your life implode. And yes, I am repeating myself from many of these videos because you need to hear the message over and over and over again that nobody is going to come rescue you. No one is going to knock on your door. It didn't happen with me and most likely it didn't happen with you. And those people, if you did have anybody to communicate with once you were discarded, and you would share your insights or your experiences and you couldn't wrap your head around what it was before you knew what narcissism was, these people get burned out. They can't wrap their head around what you're talking about. It's like you're speaking a foreign language to them. 
because you are, because you don't even know what language you're speaking until you get your light bulb moment, until you type into the browser something like spouse won't talk to me or rage fit or what is gaslighting and then ding, 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 you land on a whole bunch of information. Maybe it's through YouTube, maybe it's reading, maybe it's books, maybe it's in a search engine. But when you first get your light bulb moment, then you say to yourself, oh my gosh, there are, there's a word for this and there's terms and definitions and glossaries. The answer there is yes, yes, and yes. The thing is, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And that's exactly how I had to figure it out. I had to type things into the browser. I had to realize that, yes, in fact, the narcissist was in competition with me from everything, with raising kids to appearances, to style of clothes, to food, to restaurants, you name it. It was competition city. This is what the narcissist wants. They want to keep you down in the low vibrational quagmire state where they exist. And they want to steal your beautiful, bright, shining light and your abundance. Think about who you were before you met the narcissist. You were most likely a kind, loving, healthy, stable individual. Maybe you had some money in the bank. Your social circle was fine. You had a network of friends. Your job was going great. Maybe you were exercising multiple times a week. Your health was, in, was perfect. Everything was going well. Then what happened? I'll tell you what happened. What happened is you encountered the narcissist. They figured out rather quickly what made you tick. They figured out all about you, your hopes, your dreams, your aspirations, your goals, your hobbies, your family, your past relationships, what you want to do in the future. And they glommed onto you. They got really close to you, perhaps even had you fall in love with them because they can't fall in love with you. And when this happened and you said the pivotal words, I love you, or let's get married, or let's raise kids, or let's buy a house, or let's relocate, whatever, the, any or all of these things. When that happened, the narcissist said, okay, now my hard work is paying off. It took me a half year to get this person where I want them, and I can see the beautiful, bright future that this person has in them that they can't even see within themselves. In other words, maybe you were an empath and a people pleaser or a yes person. Maybe you didn't have boundaries. You couldn't say no, the strongest word in the English language. And remember, when you say no to something or someone, you're saying yes to yourself. The narcissist deduced all these things. And then they said, wow, if I can get this one to put a ring on my finger, this will catapult me for a period of time forward and I can have the kids raised and I can have bills paid and I can have a roof on my head and I can build a business behind the scenes and I can still get supply behind the scenes even though I'm married and I can still gallivant the globe under the guise of going to seminars or events or things. This is what I will do and no one's gonna ever figure it out. Oh, and by the way, while I'm doing that, I will also slowly administer the smear campaign and I will also slowly remove myself from this person, which was you. They wouldn't be available as they used to be. They would stay later at work. They would claim that they had to do certain visits to certain people's houses and do certain things at strange hours of the night. Sometimes when they would go away on vacations or weekends, they wouldn't even tell you that they landed or they departed. Why? Or that they didn't have phone service. I'll tell you why, because they were getting supply. They weren't doing what they said they were doing. They were doing what they wanted to be doing because they were in a competition with you. This competition for the part of the video is how many people's lives can I juggle at one time? Now I have my spouse. Now I have this person in this town. Now I have this person in this part of the country. I have this person in this different location. I have all these other people I'm juggling on my smartphones because I am now all over social media or media platforms and I'm getting supply from that basically 24 seven at the touch of a button whenever I want to. So this is what the narcissist was doing. They were in a competition with you. It was not a relationship. It was a house of cards. It was a fake relationship, a fake ship, if you will, built on quicksand. You took the bait. They had you hook, line, and sinker. It's the same thing with me. They manipulated you. They tricked you and trapped you and duped you. And they had you believing that you were in a relationship. And yes, of course, along the way, did you have good times? Absolutely you did. Did you have some great times? Yes, you did. But these were few and far between because usually, you were the unpaid helper, or you were the walking apology, or you were the errand person. You were the person who was putting out fires left, right, and center. You were the person who was doing things for the narcissist. Think about how many times you had to run to pick them up, or to drop them off, or to pick up a delivery, or to be waiting for an Amazon package, or to pay, take kids from school, or to t pick them up from school, or to pay bills, or to go to the grocery store, or to buy the wrong peanut butter, to have to return it again, or to, you, the endless to-do list was insurmountable. And as that relationship developed and went on and on, you noticed a few things. One, the endless to-do list was getting longer and longer. And number two is that your resources were taking a real hit, including your health, time, energy, money, love, social circle. But that smear campaign, it kicked into gear, I can assure you. 
shortly after you either a moved in with them or relocated or w once you guys got closer because the narcissist can never have stability they can never have one relationship that is going swimmingly they make it appear like these relationships are going swimmingly but notice the one common denominator the narcissist always throws people under the bus once they they've used them up and thrown them away they always blame their past spouses or past romantic relationships or friends that they don't no longer communicate they always say that the the fault or the downfall of the relationship was somebody else's it wasn't theirs notice this you're never going to hear the narcissist say you know what that was my fault i made a huge mistake i blew up the relationship and i knew that i did it or i knew that i didn't do it but i know i did it now no they're not going to do that because they're cowards, they're bullies, they're shallow, they're hollow, they're anxiety riddled. They need to use, abuse, and manipulate, and they need to leapfrog through life from one relationship to the next, blowing up past relationships and leaving a wake of destruction. That's why it's a competition with them. That's why, let's say that you did get discarded, that they want nothing to do with you. Why? Because they've used you up, they've taken everything from you, and they don't want to explain anything to you because if they did, they'd have to admit that they are massively flawed and that in fact they were abusing you throughout the length of that relationship but that's never going to happen the narcissist just slithers away in the night like a snake and they go on to the other unsuspecting source of supply who's been waiting in the wings but what that person doesn't realize is they now have entered a competition they didn't enter a relationship just like you didn't they entered a competition and that competition with the new supply it's going to be from the narcissist side it's going to be how much can i extract from the new supply i will tell you right now the new supply, wherever they are on the planet, or by now perhaps new sources of supply, they're being peppered daily, weekly, monthly, perhaps even yearly with abuse, just like you received. Only that most likely they're getting it worse. And yet they probably are getting it worse. And you may say, I don't think so. I got it pretty bad. I'm sure you did. And my heart goes out to you. But the narcissist is aging and they're getting older every single day as are we. And they don't like the way their looks are fading. They don't like the way their clothes are fitting. They don't like not getting the attention they used to get. What they like is what how they were when they were 10, 20, 30 years ago. Those days are long over. And remember, the aging narcissist is not a pretty sight to see. I created a series on that. You should check it out. The whole point before I close the video is you are not in a relationship. You are in a competition. You just never knew it. So guys, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the beautiful Carolinas. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning, no matter where you are on the planet. You are not alone. Remember that. You are not alone. God bless you. I love you all, and I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day, you guys. Bye.